All right, welcome kings and queens. Today we are back and we are talking about the four Americans that went to Mexico. Y'all remember that they were ambushed as they crossed the Mexican border by way of Brownsville, Texas. Unfortunately, two did not make it back home. Their lives were taken by the cartel in Mexico. And then two were found in a safe house. I didn't even know cartels referred to homes like that as a safe house. Typically, law enforcement utilizes that type of terminology. Now, I could be wrong based on ignorance, but please correct me. Do cartels refer to holding spots as safe houses? Because I don't know. Let me know. But y'all, we got to talk. I told you I was coming back. And I said, I'm just giving you bits and pieces of this. There's a lot more regarding this case. And I'm going to come back, which I'm back today. And I'm about to break it down by each individual. It's going to blow your mind. It's going to blow your mind. It's nothing new. If you've been doing your research, you already knew what time it was when the story broke. It did not sound right. It was very fishy. There were a lot of gaps. But here we are. We're going to talk about it. If you are sensitive to hearing the truth in sensitive moments like this. You know, when when someone has lost their lives, you probably want to log off. I'm going to do my best to handle this with sensitivity, but I have to tell the truth. For those of you who are tuned in or if you're new to the channel, welcome to the palace. I am Queen Sheba. I cover a variety of hot topics specific to reality television. But most importantly, I hone in on the psychological and the behavioral traits of the black experience. First things first, the cartel did give up a group of men that they deemed responsible for those crimes. Y'all, that's BS. When have you ever known a cartel just to hand you a buffet and serve up their own members? Child, please. Let me tell you what I believe has happened. I think the cartel is savvy enough down there. They did what they needed to do. They left two alive. They knew there would be a dollar amount on their heads in exchange for that 50K that was offered by the FBI. They served up a few of their men. Now, keep in mind, when this story broke, the Mexican government and also the FBI substantiated that about 90% of Mexico is run by the cartel, including the Mexican government <laughs> and the police uh, departments and all of that good stuff. Child, they, they listen, smoke and mirrors. They gave up those men. They walked them in, booked them, and they walked out the back door. There is no heroes here. They took that money. They're on their way. And those boys that they served over are back to the streets again, taking people's lives and doing what they do by way of the good old, good old cartel. I just wanted to make sure we were clear on that. So we're going to be covering the backgrounds of three of the four individuals that were ambushed on this alleged, quote unquote, medical procedure trip to Mexico. It is being it is being said that this may have been a drug turf war. And the Mexican officials are now investigating, was there even a, an appointment set with this doctor? I believe there was, just because by way of the tax exchange, I believe there was. Now, I also believe that the alleged procedure was a front. And for those of you that are not familiar with drug terminology and how this stuff works, it's a front. A front is a drug front. That's when you have official business and or official operations. But really what's going on is an exchange of goods and services. So a drug front is I can own a sandwich shop that you always see empty. It's been in business for years. And you pass it by and you say, man, that sandwich shop never has any customers. But it's, how are they thriving? Probably a front. Car wash, probably a front. 
mechanic shops that are known to place themselves in different neighborhoods, right? Typically bad neighborhoods. And what those, that's, some of them have known to be uh, drug fronts because what they do is they get those cars ready, right? When we talk about trafficking, they get those cars ready. They hide drugs and engines, tires, all of that. It's a very sophisticated operation. I would advise you um, to just do your due diligence and do your research. So, I strongly believe that this medical procedure, I'm going to ride with the Mexican officials on that. That was a front. Because Latavia, honey, don't nobody go way out to Metamorphos where it's sitting on the edge of the Gulf of Mexico. Can we all agree on that? Let's get into it because I I really feel like this is going to be a good one. All right. So I'm going to start with Eric Williams. Remember I said three of the four have criminal, criminal records And also heavy, heavy, strong connections to drugs, drug trafficking, drug manufacturing. Honey, you name it, I'll claim it, okay? Eric Williams. I hope I'm saying his name right. Yeah, Eric Williams did not have a criminal record. Inhale, exhale. But let me tell you what, let me tell you what's shady about Eric. Sir, your wife went on record. Check this out, y'all. Eric's wife went on record. He's he's one of the surviving victims. She said she had no idea that his black ass was crossing the border. His wife says she ain't heard from him since Friday. Pause on that. Imagine that. Your husband, your wife, you ain't heard from them since Friday. And then you turn on the news and you're like, what the hell? Probably it probably, she probably did not even connect the dots immediately right away until they started showing pictures. Right. Didn't even know the boy was going to Mexico with his quote unquote, quote unquote, alleged friends. Now that tells me a lot, but this is all based on assumption. The first thing I'm assuming is, Eric, you were messing around, probably. This is just me coming at this from a a different angle. So which one of the women were you messing around with, allegedly? Right? Because you don't disappear on your wife. Forget the drugs, y'all. Let's take the drugs out. Okay? Let's just take the drugs out for a second. Which one of those ladies were you messing around with? to disappear on your wife because what, what this is giving based on you, forget the drugs, Eric, that this was a, uh, a sneaky link in addition to a drug run. Right. And although you don't have a criminal history, it is alleged that you have run the border with them before or if not you, the other three. So, you know, birds of a feather flock together, but were you messing with that girl? that got out in Brownsville. My grandma used to say, can't no wrong. Can't no right come from doing wrong. Now, if I were your wife, you ain't got to go home, but you got to get the hell out of here. I was waiting on you at the door. Let's get into Latavia. Latavia, a.k.a. Washington, Latavia, a.k.a. McGee, Latavia who, Latavia what, Latavia, Latavia, Latavia. She has many aliases, okay? And the only reason why you have aliases is when you're about that life. Latavia is about that life, y'all. Unfortunately, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm bringing you the real. Latavia is about that drug life. She has an extensive criminal record criminal charges regarding illegal drugs hold on and that would be fine right she a grown woman she can do what she want to do let's get into it Latavia not only has a history of manufacturing and running drugs y'all but just recently she was arrested in January 2022 because her eight-year-old daughter tested positive for amphetamines. Pause on that. Pause on that. Tested positive for amphetamines. You say, well, okay, kids could, no, let me go a little bit deeper. 
in 20, uh, 2016, she was uh, thrown in jail because all three of her kids, okay, all three of her kids were found to test positive for marijuana, methamphetamines, amphetamines. What does this mean? You want me to spell it out? I'm going to just keep it raw. This bitch was giving her kids drugs. Imagine that. This dusty bitch, excuse my language, was feeding those kids drugs. Look it up for yourself, okay? That's ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. You know, it's one thing if you want to run drugs to Mexico, girl, live your life. That's on you. But when you, you have been abusing your children by pumping drugs into their system at an early age, imagine that. As of recent, your eight-year-old tested positive for amphetamines. I can't make this up. I cannot make this up. Not only are you pouring drugs back into our community, but also into your own lineage. If that's a person with no soul, I, I, I can't give you a better example. Now those kids are going to grow up. I guarantee you on the other side of the tracks, they've been exposed to a lifestyle. They're probably addicted to drugs because she's been giving them drugs since 2016. You do the math. We're talking the, over the course of seven years, which tells me at that time in 2016, that eight-year-old that tested positive in 2022 was only one. So when did you start feeding that baby drugs? Her kids should be taken away if they haven't already. I, I'm just completely baffled, right? I just want to give you a little bit of meat and potatoes about this. Um, wow. So Latavia was one of the three of the four that have that have an extensive uh, history with drugs. Not only that, law enforcement sources have shared that this was not their first run. This was not their first run at all. They were no amateurs. They've run to Mexico before to buy drugs, whatever they were doing over there. But I tell you what, this was the one that cost two of them their lives because what you're not going to do is play with the cartel. I still believe it was a setup by the medical doctor's office, and I think they got too damn comfortable. And now here's the thing. You got way too comfortable. I'll come back to that. I'll come back to that. But that's what we have on Latavia. So, so let's talk about Zendel Brown. He's also deceased. Zendel Brown was the one that contacted his sister. At some point in this trip, something happened in that van to make him second guess if this was the right decision or not. It could have been his intuition. It could have been who knows what. But at some point, he texted family members to say, I do not think this is a good idea. He began to give timestamps, whether it was subconsciously or consciously, timestamps to his sister, and God knows only what else he said throughout the text exchange, okay? He began to, smart man, he, whatever he felt, he felt it. Because he, was, he started to Snapchat and show video, you know, maybe something in his spirit just didn't feel right about this. And he, what he, you know, maybe he was like, you know what, if I'm not going to do nothing else, I'm going to get it on tape to prove who I was with. So maybe he felt like this was a setup. Now, was it a setup that I asked y'all in my, in my uh, video, my previous video, I said, I do, I do strongly feel like this is a setup. And so does authorities. They just don't know which end. Was it a setup by his own friends? Right. And, and you know what? Unfortunately, we got to get hurt too, to make this shit look legit. Or was it just a, a setup on the, from Mexico towards the Americans? Now, whatever he felt, 
the vibes that he were getting, he was getting from his friends. So I don't know, sir. But like I've said before, y'all trust your gut, trust your intuition. When something don't feel right, don't let nobody try to influence you to do something that you don't want to do. My no is a full sentence. May you rest in peace, Nell Brown. I'm sorry that you lost your life over this. And he did have a criminal history, unfortunately, um, along with Latavia and Shaid Woodard. He did have a criminal history, um, which was inclusive of, of robbery, um, domestic violence, all of that. Yeah, that's nothing new. You know, when you live by the sword, you die by the sword. So that's that's a bit on Zendel Brown. Okay, so we're going to move on to Shaid Woodard. Woo! Y'all, he has a very lengthy, lengthy, descriptive criminal history. Drug trades, manufacturing, violent robbery and assault. Okay, they were about this life, all three of them. I don't know how Eric Williams fits in other than this trip. Or just maybe, you know, sometimes you have friends on the outskirts that you hook up with every now and then. But I think Eric Williams, let me go back, You utilize this trip to get a little booty call, a little booty action, you know, with, with this is all alleged with the girl, Carol, that's her name, with the girl that was in the van that decided to get out, right? Right before they got to Mexico. And now that I'm thinking about this shit, Eric, did you tip her off? Did you tip her off to be like, hey, this is going down. It's not going to be good. This is what I want you to say. I want you to say you lost your ID. As a matter of fact, throw that fucker out. And I need you to get out in Brownsville because some shit is about to go down. I wouldn't put it past them. This is just all hypothetical. I would not put it past them. But back to Shaid Wooder, very, very, very violent criminal history. So he, he, he knew what he was walking into. And I would not be surprised if, if he was not strapped. He's done it before. He'll do it again. You know, normally when you're associated with behaviors like that. But you underestimated those boys over there in Mexico. And you thought by coming in a different way, crossing a different border, that you would have the advantage. Mm -mm. That's not how that played out for you, unfortunately. You know, my grandmother used to always say, there's somebody bigger and badder. There's always somebody bigger and badder. And yeah, that was a huge mistake on your end. You, all three, all four of them were at a disadvantage. Because that was not your turf, which is why the Mexican authorities are suspecting that this is a drug war turf. And you're not about to do shit in Mexico by way of picking up illegal substances, dropping off money, exchange of shit without their permission. I don't give a damn who you think you are. There is rules of engagement when it comes to the good old cartel. Now, if y'all are insistent on continuing to go to Mexico, God bless you. Don't F around and find out, okay? Because I don't think they will be as lenient the next time. But yeah, so this group, y'all, they had a trap house. They had a whole operation here in the United States of America. Raggedy ass house, but here it is. They had an entire trap house operation. They've been running things, uh, drugs for years. They've been busted before. And that's why when the story first came out, the family members were saying, yeah, this is a very, very uh, close knit group. Mm hmm. But let me tell you something. Let me go back to Latavia. Girl, you walked your friends right into harm's way. Y'all let this broke down, dusty, walk y'all into harm's way. Right? But they're grown men. They had an option. And they chose otherwise. So I promise you that I will give you an update one thing I will share with you before I log off is that Mexicans, native Mexicans are outraged. They are outraged regarding this case.
because they feel that the Mexican government went harder for these four black Americans than they have for their own natives. Thousands and thousands of native Mexicans that have gone missing, have their lives taken or completely disappeared. And they feel like their government has not expended the resources to pour into their own kind before uh, going the extra mile for some natives. So let me tell you something. Stay your ass out of Mexico. It's chestnut checkers. Stay out of Mexico. Mexico has no interest in saving you and or helping you should something happen to you while visiting Mexico. Shanquilla Robinson's case is a prime example. They purposely classified it as a femicide, knowing that when it comes to international laws, it cannot be treated as a crime. It's a classification, but the U.S. really don't have a jurisdiction to prosecute. It's just not checkers. Keep underestimating Mexico, and they will continue to embarrass you. That's all I got.